As you can tell by the title of this video, we are no longer in Gotsamoy. We rented a car, we hopped on the ferry, and made our way to the beautiful beachside town of Hua Hin, which is just the first stop of our little road trip across Thailand. Hua Hin has always been a popular destination for both Thais and international tourists because of its close proximity to Bangkok, but surprisingly, it's our first time here. So join us today as we explore the beauty of Hua Hin. <laughs> Starting our day off with coffee at this place called Brief, and it was actually recommended by one of you guys on Instagram. We have never been to Hua Hin, so we asked you guys on Instagram about where to go, what to see. So we're really appreciative of all the responses that came in, and we're checking those things off our list today. Okay, we're gonna keep it brief here. We're gonna finish our coffee and the waffle, and then we're gonna head off to the national park called. And over there, there will be a beautiful boardwalk that's kind of through the lotus ponds. So we'll check that out first and then we'll come back into town and check out Hua Hin Beach. Chopstick Mountain, but I was surprisingly afraid of all the monkeys there. There were tons, so if you also are not a fan of monkeys, you might not want to visit there. I'll go, but stay in the car. Yeah, or stay in the car, like what I did. So the second place we went to was Ratcha Pakti Park, which is a historical attraction that honors seven past kings of Thailand. It was free of charge, but there isn't that much to do there, so you can go there and take a couple of photos, but that's probably it. The last place we also checked out is kind of off the beaten path. We went to ice cream and cats. So the ice cream was delicious. The cats are super cute. You probably don't want to go there if you're allergic to cats. We couldn't stay long because Note was starting to feel it a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, that was a couple things that we did that was fun. This is how Ty's liked road trip. <laughs> Take advice on fried chicken. Go best. <laughs> Here at the Khao Sam Roy Yard National Park, there's a few attractions that you can go to. Yeah, it's pretty cool because we're here at the Bon Bon Bua Nature Education Center where the lotus pond is. But there's actually a beach on one side, a beach down here. There's also a viewpoint down here with a boat trip. And I think the most popular one is the Praia Nakhon Cave. Mm. So that one you have to hike. I think like 30 minutes or maybe an hour to get to that cave. So let's go check out the Bung Bua, which is Lotus Pond. So unfortunately, they just uh, doing some construction on the bridge. You can only walk 500 meters, no, 50 meters out. So we're now thinking of taking a boat. And the boat is 500 baht per boat. 
obviously if you have more people it would be cheaper per person <laughs> but we only just have the two of us do you think they like tear down the bridge on purpose so that no. people can take the boat i think they're just going to take their sweet time to repair the bridge and hoping you would take the boat <laughs> and we're gonna do it we're gonna fall for it <laughs> okay let's check out the bridge first then so we right away noticed the no drone zone sign right here so what did you have to do just now i just went into the office asked the rangers fill a little form and we can fly it door now and it was just this building over here the nature education center yeah the lotus are dead. Yeah, this is not the right season. They started blooming in January and last to May. Damn, we always, we always miss, miss it. it. We also missed it when we were in Patalung. We went to the uh, lotus. What is it called? The lotus lake? Yeah, Talenoi. Oh, you can see a field. Look, there's some purple ones out there. And maybe two pink ones and one yellow one. <laughs> <laughs> Still nice though. It's pretty sad when you were able to count how many are left. <laughs> I'll help home. Okay. okay. What are coconut. we getting? Fresh coconut. I kind of want to eat it from the shell itself, but uh, <laughs> she said it would be harder to eat it on the boat. <laughs> so she put in a carnation cup for us. <laughs> for the meat. Look at that. Oh. Mm. So refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> Safety first. Safety first. Can put this here for now. Yeah. We Safety just have second. to we just have to wear it to get on the boat. Once you're on the boat, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the boat tour is usually one hour and it'll just go down the lotus um, the marshlands here and then go towards the rice fields I think. But it's shaded. So that's good. Okay, he's starting the engine. It's going to be loud. really resilient though mm -hmm. aren't they like they can grow like they they come back every every year yeah <laughs> I'm just saying yes I have no knowledge about lotus flowers <laughs> oh, this one. wow this one is so beautiful <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what's inside lotus seeds too young to eat yeah. Oh! 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 Mmm, sweet. It's kind of milky. Yeah. So the story behind the name Samroy Yacht is from way back then there used to be a Chinese merchant boat that came here and it sank and only 300 survived and it was called Samroy Rod. Rod means survive but as the time goes by people pronounce it differently. 
from rod now is to yacht. Yacht means peak, but it has nothing to do with 300 peaks. It's 300 survivors. So we learned before that the wetlands are super important as it provides a natural habitat for all the animals. Like we can see a lot of birds, there's a lot of fish in here, but also the local people use this wetland here as one of their main sources of food. Like they fish here a lot, which is very important. And when this overflows, it actually goes into the Gulf. So I think environmentally, it's also important to have a wetland here in case of like flooding or anything like that. So did you enjoy that? Yeah, I think if it was full bloom, like full of lotuses, it's gonna be so beautiful. Yeah. So come during January to May. to Huahim Beach just in time for sunset and today is Sunday so we can see a lot of families around. I'm surprised to see though that there's a lot of vendors and restaurants yeah. set up like all along the beach here. It's something we don't see in Samui. Yeah it's very different because in Samui I don't think you're allowed to set up umbrellas and seatings on the yeah. beach. Like right up to the water yeah. basically. But I'm not complaining today because I'm quite hungry. <laughs> Even though we're going to go to the cicada market and the tamarind market after this, I think I do need a quick snack from one of the vendors over here. They have hot dogs, fish balls, imitation crabs, tofu. And this is more. More. Let's get two tofus. Okay. Oh, nice and hot. <laughs> Do you want to eat them now? Yes. Oh, really hot. It's hot. <laughs> it seems like Huahim Beach is just a long stretch of beach with a lot of resorts and hotels on it. Yeah, there's a lot of chain, chain hotels. Uh, Intercontinental, the Hilton ship right here. Yeah. Centara Grand. It has yeah. a distinct smell though. Like horse poo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like a horse. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't think we're going to see much of a sunset today because it is super cloudy. But before we go to the night market, we do want to share a little bit more about the road trip that we are currently on. So our first stop is Wahin and then we're going to head to Bangkok but ultimately the goal is to drive up to Chiang Mai and to Bai which is a small town in Mei Hong Song where Note spent most of his childhood and teenage years. Yes, we used to have a bamboo hut resort and an elephant camp. So we will go check that out when we're up there. It's probably going to look like a jungle, right? Yeah, it hasn't been taken care of for <laughs> more than 15 years. And if you want to be part of our road trip, you should add us on Instagram because we'll be asking for recommendations for places to go, um, different cities, different provinces that we haven't been to in Thailand and maybe you have, so you can leave us some suggestions there. which was highly recommended by so many people and it's just full of food. There's Western food, there's Thai food, there's a lot of seating. It just has a really good vibe. And they're nice and clean. Yeah. There's even like a pizza oven, like a stone oven. Did you mention the live music? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's also live music which is really nice. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Central to speak here. Oh. Thank you. Can I try one more? Yes! <laughs> it's too small, right? Happy cow! Coconut jelly. It's actually really delicious. We have to get this. I after think we dinner. get it. We get it now? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll. 
ข้าวมื้อมันตัวนี้นะคะครับผมขอบคุณนะคะลูกสวัสดีค่ะขอบคุณมากค่ะ She made it herself quite delicious <laughs> So we got dessert before we got a main meal here Do you feel adventurous? Do you want fresh oysters? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we did have fresh scallops just yesterday at the Huahi Night Market, which were delicious. Like four dollars for eight scallops. We ended up getting sixteen scallops. Oh, it was it was really really good. So it wasn't easy to decide what to get because there are so many choices. But we did go with barbecue ribs. In Thai, we call that si kong mu op ong. They use ong, which is that traditional clay container. Originally, local Thai people use that to store rainwater. Oh. Yeah, and they convert it into their own clay oven. Oh yeah, we saw them like pulling the ribs out mm -hmm. of out of that clay oven, which is really cool. That's kind of what got us to try it. The second thing we got is a Thai favorite item. This is yam mama, which is a instant noodle spicy salad. This is like all Thai's favorite. Yeah. Uh, dish. Everyone likes yam. Yam means salad. Because it leaves you that like. What do you call it? That taste in your mouth where you're like, mmm, it's so spicy. Sap. Yeah. Even I'm looking at it now, it gets salivating. Yeah. So these are like traditional Thai herbal drinks. So I got the Longan <laughs> one and Note got the Roselle one and they taste very different. I think because a lot of foreigners come here, they make it less sweet. Mm -hmm. Usually, if you buy from the local Thai market, it's super sweet. Yeah, this I would buy perfect. a bottle of water on the side and then I would like mix it. So this is really yummy. I don't even know how to describe it. You just have to try longan. It's one of my favorite, favorite flavors. Okay, let's go with uh, ribs first. Let's try the ribs. Mm. Mm. It's not completely fall off the bone, but it has a really nice flavor to it like it's charred and it's kind of sweet it tastes like tasu like um, Chinese style barbecue pork mm. to be honest I usually don't order yum why I don't know because maybe the way they lay out the ingredients outside it doesn't look very appetizing but did you know they boil the, the stuff before they mix it yeah yeah, yeah. so it kind of kills the germs right <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm gonna make an ultimate bite with everything on it. No, not fishy at all. The spicy taste, the sap taste, like hit your lips and your tongue right away. It's quite delicious. I feel like all our choices today were very healthy. You <laughs> were. We didn't order like deep fried cheese balls, but that does look really good too. <laughs> So right next to the tamarind market, there's actually one more night market called the Cicada Market, but that one is more like an arts and craft market. They are both open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. So when you come to this market, you might as well go browse the Cicada Market as well. We hope you enjoyed spending a day with us in Hua Hin. Next time you see us, we will be in Bangkok. As always, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> wow! Let me try one more.